Hey everybody, welcome back! 46 wins in a row, huh? Isn't it lovely? Isn't it one wonderful? Okay, okay. Little light on HP? Guess what? No longer a little light on HP. LGKQFW8H. Um, can I have a big thank you in chat to the greatest uh, deck of cards of all time? It was a really, really swell payout. I very much appreciate it. Appreciate it. Now, truth be told, it looks like we would have been fine anyway because there was a tinted rock in the next room. But you know, your your whole psychology changes when you have uh, low HP. Sometimes it changes for the better. You get a little bit more, you know, concerned with your HP. You get a little bit more precious with it. It's a good thing, you know. You treat it like the 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 queen it is. However, sometimes it makes you a little cagey. When you're when you're cagey and you're not playing loose anymore, you know, sometimes the harder you grip something, the easier it is for it to slip through your fingers. So I'm, I'm very happy that this one... I mean, he's certainly not sorted yet. We got a long way to go before it's actually, like, under control. Um, but given our stats and then combined with having a little bit of survivability now, it's, it's good eats. I'll say it's good eats. Lots of Tinted Rocks, too. It's a nice... Even though that one's not a Spirit Heart, you know, because of what we had going on earlier, certainly not the end of the world. Anyway. Um, I'm recording this right after the last one, so, you know, rest assured, I'm still living an anecdoteless existence. Although I will say... So, I've, I've been eating these Turkish baked goods recently. And I, I, I don't even know what any of this stuff is called, right? <laughs> so it's not really a good anecdote, but I think I have I have been too ignorant to Turkish food for too long. Now I will I'm not trying to ruffle any feathers. I know, you know, it's uh, controversial. I don't want to say that you know falafel is uh, a, a Turkish food when it's actually Lebanese or it's actually you know from Israel or I you know I I don't know right. But you know for for food from that region. I really only knew, like, falafel and, uh, doner, you know, and, uh, hummus. And, uh, I mean, I'm trying to think of what else. Uh, what's the... <laughs> hold on, hold on. Um, Lebanese breakfast with eggs. Shakshuka! There we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know Shakshuka. And then, like, dude, Turkish coffee. And Turkish coffee is delicious. It's not just a song off the Spelunky soundtrack. Um, but I, I was ignorant to the, the Turkish baked goods. These Turkish bagels are, are delicious. They're like... Yeah, we'll just take this. It, it's like a it compared to a like a Montreal or a New York style bagel. It's it's much larger in like circumference, so it's a bigger yeah yeah yeah. It's a bigger ring, um, but then the ring itself is much thinner, and then is absolutely coated on on the top with sesame seeds. Like you you can't. There, there is no bite that contains no sesame seeds. Like, they're, they're dripping off of the thing. It's amazing, dude. It's fantastic. Now, is this the coffee shop that I was getting yelled at? <laughs> yes, okay. But it's not, or the, not the coffee shop, the bakery. It's not the bakery's fault that, you know, some nut job happened to be driving by, you know? Don't hold it against the local business. It's real good. And I had, like, some kind of... Again, I, I wish I knew the name, but uh, it's, uh, you know, it escapes me. It was like a stuffed bagel. It was like the same bagel dough. Um, and then inside of it had black olives and feta cheese. And then it was kind of baked. Oh, my God. It's fantastic. You ever get the chance, I highly recommend it. Highly recommend it. Take me down to the next floor. That's all I got. That's really all I got. I'm looking forward to maybe making a bagel sandwich later today, but... Can I tell you? Look, I I'm I'm a grown man. I'm willing to admit some weaknesses uh, in my life. Okay. I I could be tidier. I I don't live like a slob anymore. When I was when I was single and you know younger, definitely I would say slob esque is fair. 
some people are born tidy or, or get that discipline from an early age. Like, as long as I have known Malf, he has always been a very neat and tidy individual. A, a lot of people come by it later in life, and I think I would describe myself as such. Um, I don't know why I would pop that. Really would have made more sense to just pop it right there, I suppose. But, um, but one weakness I have, I'm really, really bad at slicing bagels. There's just something about... Like, like bread, I used to be bad at slicing it. Then I realized as I got older, it's more about patience and then using the saw method more than you actually put pressure on the slice. You know, so, you know, when you're, when you're cutting bread, if you're impatient, your wrist is going to turn. You're going to start cutting your bread at like a weird angle. You're going to have slices that, you know, they, the slice finishes before you're actually at the bottom of the loaf. And then your next one has like you know, a double-sided crust on it. That's a little wonky. If you're patient, you, there, there's a reason there's a bread knife. You want to use the bread knife. You want to do a saw motion and basically just let the weight of the knife carry it through the, the bread as you saw. You know, as a 10-year-old, I didn't really get that. I was just like, I want bread. So, da, 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 the whole loaf is looks like crap now. Um, but bagels have always escaped me. I know I'm not alone because there are those, like, bagel slicers or even like just a holder you put the bagel in and then you slice it I don't really have anything else to say about it. I'm just like you know so I got these bagels that I'm gonna you know make a sandwich out of later but I'm I'm nervous about slicing them I think I'm gonna slice them and they're not gonna turn out so good <laughs> and it's a beautiful baked good I don't want to ruin that anyway so I'll tell you, it's, it's, you might not expect this. As compared to the last run, I am like much, much, much happier with this one right now. We got good DPS, great damage. We got good, uh, we got two orbitals. I love using an orbital. You know, they, it's, someone said, you know, NL, uh, there was a run recently, I had 40-something damage. I was still using my cube of meat to do damage. It's true. I, I don't know what to say. Uh... It's, it's a very, just so typically me. Oh, baby. That's the second, uh... It's <laughs> the second Oops, I did it. Oops, I did it again reference I've made in the past couple of days. I don't think we want any of those, dude. When I was recording this Blunky 2 episode, I care, there was, like, some kind of artifact. And I was like... I, I thought the old lady threw it into the ocean at the end. She did. But I went down and got it for you. Aw, you shouldn't have. Oops, I... I'm glad we're kind of entering uh, an era with more Britney Spears appreciation. I, I was, I mean, here's the thing, okay? I was a huge fan of Britney Spears um, around her debut. I was 11, 12 years old. Um, you know, Hit Me Baby One More Time was inescapable. And I mean, if you weren't alive back then or were not, you know, cognizant, you know, you don't have memories from back then, it was really like a cultural moment, you know? It was, I'm not going to say it was like, you know, the writing of the Magna Carta or, you know, Martin Luther posting the tenets of Protestantism on the church door. I'm just saying it was like, it was a big moment, culture, you couldn't escape the song, right? Um, you know, of all the, and I maybe I shouldn't open this, but I did it anyway. Um... You know, of all the, you know, people think about that era as like, you know, NSYNC, Backstreet Boys, maybe even like the Spice Girls a couple of years earlier. They were all huge, but Britney Spears was like at the very tippy top for sure. Then as I got a little older, um, you know, and I started choosing my own music rather than letting the radio choose my music for me. Um, you know, you, there's a natural sort of period, I think, in everybody's life where they, you know, you, you kind of Kylo Ren it and you're like, you know, kill the past. So, uh, I was like, any any pop music except Annie, the Swedish superstar deified by Pitchfork Media, is like, uh, you know, it's a debasement to listen to it. Um, but I think, you know, as, as I've exited that, like, needlessly knee-jerk contrarian portion of my life, you know, in the last decade or half decade at least, you start to hear the songs again, you kind of evaluate them on their own merits, you go, you know what? There's a lot of manufacture involved in, in this, but at the same time, you can't deny that they were doing some killer stuff with the hooks, dude. I mean, like, that... 
Oops, I did it again. Oh, dude, I, we are absolutely going unicorn stump here. Oops, I did it again. Um, hit me, baby, one more time. Even stuff like, you know, Stronger. You know, they, they, they brought their A-game with that sort of stuff. It's not necessarily my favorite kind of music, but I, I can respect it. I also think there's sort of like a weird... Um, and, and I only say it because I've gone through it. But I, I think there's like a, a... A weird, like, nostalgia, reverse nostalgia that happens. You know, when something is popular, it's liked. And then the period just after that, it's reviled. We might as well fish for... Or get tarot cloth here for sure, and then... Um, and then, maybe like five years after that, it goes back into, like... Respected territory. It definitely happened. Believe it or not, it ha I remember it happening with NSYNC, you know? And it, it's funny because people, for the most part, kind of like Justin Timberlake, right? But when he left NSYNC, everyone was like, oh, the pretty boy is too good for NSYNC, yada, yada. And it, we were people making fun of, like, Cry Me a River, even though it's a slapper and uh, more moody than the average pop song, you know, had any right to be in the year 2002. Um, Anyway, where was I going with this? Anyway, they're well-liked now, is what I'm saying. It went from, like, that to, like, yeah, okay, I, I'll, I know all the words to NSYNC's No Strings Attached album, um, but only ironically. And now, sometimes people are like, hey, yo, turn it up. <laughs> is that, is that, uh, it's gonna be me? Crank it. Okay, well, I didn't really want to pick this up nor lose, um, Unicorn Stump's invincibility temporarily, but sure. Okay, so I love that we got a lot of positives here, but really all I cared to see was a speed up. So it's a little bit of a slap in the face, but it's all right. So I'm just here to say, like, let me tell you, um, I the I, the last time I remember being overly cynical about um, like a modern pop group was One Direction, um, and I'll say that even you know listening to them now. You know, when they, when they occasionally come on when I'm inside of, like, a drugstore or something like that. It's not my favorite uh, in the world, but I think, you know, it's... Very weird champ energy to be, like, a grown man and be like, I hate those British heartthrob pop stars. Well, well, when is the media gonna give Pink Floyd their due, you know? It's just a very strange energy. It's not for you, old man. Get over it. If you, if you can't respect the hooks, then, you know, just get a, It's not a big deal. It's like whenever I see someone hating on Justin Bieber, and you know, there's reasons to hate, maybe like the drunk driving arrest, for sure. Um, but when I, when I see people hating on Justin Bieber, if you're like, you know, under the age of 25, I'm like, okay, I, I get it. It's kind of like contemporary, right? If you're over the age of 40, I'm like, dude, it's not for you. So shouldn't you be tweeting about, like, the Civil War or something? Either Civil War, the American Civil War, the, the, the Spanish Civil War, Marvel's Captain America Civil War. Like, is any, any Civil War would be more on brand. Okay, so that's one of the finest moments of my career right there. Um, that's not a library, right? That must be a shop. I'm not here to gatekeep and tell you what you can and can't care about. I'm just saying the energy is it <laughs> gets it gets a little weird champ or totally normal. Yeah, I use a weird champ in real life. Maybe you're gonna gatekeep me now. Tell me I can't do that. Watch me. I w I w I'm a tax paying member of society. I can say weird champ in modern parlance if I want. Now, I probably wouldn't go to my accountant and be like, oh, sorry for the disorganization. We moved to a new system this year, so our books are a little weird, champ. Or, uh, yeah, I wouldn't go to my doctor and be like, oh, you know, doctor, usually my stools were very pog, but lately they've been a little bit monka s. <laughs> you gotta know your audience. I'm telling you, though, for real, I genuinely believe that we will hear... The phrase Pog or Pog Champ in a film in the next three years. Like a major film. I'm not saying it's going to make uh, $500 million at the box office. But a film that is released 
wide in real theaters. So not like, you know, you know, like an indie film about streaming. I, I, I genuinely think it'll happen. And it, it makes me laugh because I know that people's reaction is going to be like, Ew, my reaction is like... I, I mean, I don't, what can I say? I'm the guy who, you know, in the, in the before times when we'd go to hockey games and they'd, they'd put kids on the uh, Jumbotron doing Fortnite dances, I'd be like, yeah, do it. <laughs> oh, he's flossing. Oh, there's, there's hype. The hype, I, I can never figure hype out, dude. Orange Justice, maybe, even though it makes you look boneless, but... It's just, you know, it's a natural evolution of language. I don't know why so many people get uh, obsessed with the idea. I, you know, I mean, I think I know why, I hate to say it, but you know, like, you're in school, you're a naturally good writer because you read a lot as a kid. Because uh, I've been there. Not to say that I'm like an amazing writer now, but by like fifth grade standards, I was crushing it, right? Um, but, and you know, you get praise your life for spell or your whole adolescence, I should say, for spelling things correctly, and then you start to, you know, ascribe some value to that because it, some value from that has been ascribed to you. And then you see somebody making millions of dollars, going uh, Gucci gang, Gucci gang, Gucci gang, and you're like, uh, <laughs> am I the only person here who recognizes that Gucci gang isn't a word? Well. Not thrilled with our item selection here. So I wouldn't mind holding Mom's purse here. I'm, I might do a full run reroll. Like, I don't think it would be the worst thing in the world to do. The thing is, you know, I, I think there are some debasements of, of modern language, for sure. Like, I mean, I've said it before. I, and, and again, I recognize the hypocrisy to the extent that I'm actually like, you know, don't li don't think that what I'm about to say has any merit. It's actually completely just selfish, but whenever people say on accident instead of by accident, it sends me into the stratosphere, you know? And I have no idea why. In my head, I'm like, it's, it's by accident. But, you know, the language, it constantly evolves, you know? Again, I, I mean, we've talked about this numerous times before, but I think it depends on your perspective, you know? How do you look at the dictionary? Do you look at the dictionary as the Bible of what is and isn't a word, and language flows from that? Or do you look at it as the dictionary reflects the way that language is used and can be used as a reference guide? Like, oh, somebody said the word posthumously, and I don't know what that means. I could look it up, you know? I mean, I think the answer is that it's a little bit of both. But I, I'm really, like, a firm believer that, like... Look, so something that people say sometimes is, like, oh, you know what I mean. That's not always going to be true. But I think there's multiple purposes to language, right? Like, I think one purpose for language is communicating clearly and efficiently. So if you're, you're writing, like, a scientific paper or something like that, it's very important. Um, and then one other purpose of language is to either tell a story or perhaps even like evoke a feeling. And I think then you gotta you gotta be way more permissive uh, about things that are and aren't words. I mean, can I tell one of the formative experiences I had with respect to this in my life? This is real. This is truthful. I swear to God. I wrote a. Uh, it was in eleventh grade or twelfth grade biology. I wrote a paper and I did like you know, pretty well on it, but one of the things I got marked down for is I used the word fruition. And then my teacher put, like, six question marks next to it and then wrote not a word and gave me, like, minus one mark or something. I just remember being like, first off, it is a word, so you're A, wrong, and I should probably go talk to you, but I think, I, it must have been 12th grade because I'm pretty sure I had senioritis by then. <laughs> I was just like, you know, I did my part. If you can't see my genius, I'll be out of here soon anyway. Um, I was like, even if it's not a real word, like, why are you marking me down for it? You you know what I meant. Like, if I you're you're a smart lady, you know you got a master's degree in in a science. If I said the word fruition, what does that mean to you? And it's not hot and fresh out the kitchen. Let me tell you that much. Okay, drop oh. the hey, hey, what the. Okay. <laughs> I had Dan's stream muted in the background, not watching, just happened to be there earlier. And uh, I guess he must have gone unlive. 
that he's hosting. Congratulations, Grand Pooh Bear, by the way, who appears to be wearing about a hundred hats right now, uh, and also one Twitch Rivals. Uh, for Fall Guys. Anyway, that's just my thoughts on this subject, you know? I, I would even go a step further. I don't think I have a mastery. Well, I don't know. Okay, let me rephrase. Do I think I've mastered the English language? Yes. Do I think I am a master of the English language? Like, am I a Rembrandt or something like that? No, you know, I, I, I think that I have a mastery for my own purposes. And, you know, it, people compliment me on my diction and, and, you know, the way I can craft a story using words and stuff like that. But, um, no, I don't look at myself as one of the modern masters of English. However, I think that, like, competency is when you use words properly. Mastery is when you, like, use them improperly in, pro in proper ways, if that makes sense. You know what I mean? By the way, I, sh I probably should not say that I've mastered the English language when one of the things I get roasted for a lot is people are like, how many times a second does this guy say like? Like, it's just like, I mean, you know what I'm talking about. We shouldn't have done it. <laughs> I knew we shouldn't have done it. But anyway, as you know. Not, nothing tilts, and again, this I apologize because you've heard this a hundred times before from me. Nothing tilts me more than when I'm having a conversation with somebody about something, and I'm like, I'm, I, I communicate succinctly to some extent, <laughs> but very deliberately. Like, nothing I say, for the most part, is, uh, is going out there to just kind of, like, fill space. Like, when I craft a sentence, I think to myself, how do I want, what do I want a person to feel when they hear this sentence? What do I want them to be thinking about, you know, to some extent? And, you know, it's not, it's not as, like, intellectual as that, but you get the idea. I don't, I don't just, like, fill time most of the time. I'm trying to fill time in the best way possible. Um, but when I'm, like, telling a story to somebody with a point, and they, like, out of nowhere are like, Hey, can you go back a second? You said the word irregardless. I just thought you would want to know that, like, irregardless isn't really a word. Um, you just use the word regardless instead. See, because the thing is, like, I wouldn't want anybody uh, to actually, like, correct you on it in a situation where it mattered. Like, I don't know, some kind of hypothetical job interview at the Merriam-Webster Corporation. So, I just thought it'd be better if I embarrassed you and also showed you that I, like, wasn't listening to the last... Uh, 15 minutes of what you were saying at all because of the fact that I was exclusively waiting for the time that I could come in and correct you to, you know, feel some kind of uh, vindication about the fact that in third grade I won the, you know, spelling bee or something like that. It's just a very strange sort of... I'm like, you know what I'm... We're, we're having a conversation. It's not like... I didn't realize we were supposed to be auditing each other at all times. For the... I don't even want that anymore. I'm super stoked with Godhead, by the way, but... You know, at, at that level, can we, uh, oh, you know, while you were telling me this story about, like, you know, this thing that happened to you that obviously affects you a lot, I noticed you used the same adjective twice over the course of three sentences. I don't, like, I don't want to, I'm not one of these guys, but, you know, these kind of guys are out there that would um, feel that your story is a little bit less punchy based on the fact that you use the same adjective twice. You ever consider, like, getting a thesaurus to kind of, like, beef up the story you're telling me? Tell you a story about how my parents are in the hospital right now it's just, it's just what you sound like okay so you know feel you don't have to follow my advice i'm just one person but here's what i would say you know if, if if you are the kind of person that corrects people on their grammar all the time um imagine if you talk to yourself would you be stoked some people are by the way or at least they think they would be they would be like yes because my ideal for life is to never make a grammar mistake all right, my ideal for life is to treat people with, you know, respect and, you know, uh, ha have work that produces value to some extent, even if it is on a leisure context, and then, like, you know, for the most part, uh, I mean, I want to entertain people, but also I want to act, you know, with a certain degree of integrity and, and set a good example for my family that I'm also providing for. But, sure, I guess never uh, saying I could care less when what you mean to say is I couldn't care less, that's a noble goal as well. You know, see, every, every, you know, everybody's got their own journey in life. I'm just saying, dude. I just, and, you know, it, it, being hyper corrected is insanely annoying. There, it, maybe it's, maybe it's me just part of that, but, oh, 
There's like no faster way to be like, well, I gotta go. And if I'm talking with somebody and they're like, well, when you said this, I know you meant this, but did you mean this? I'm like, yeah, you got it. Congrats, you're very intelligent. Anyway, you can tell this bothers me, so let's move on. <laughs> What's going on in this room? Thank you, thank you, Navi. Come, come, Navi! You know that, Our Lady Peace? Dude, so I don't, I'm not the biggest Our Lady Peace fan. They're a Canadian alternative rock group from the... Uh, well, they're probably still around, but from like... Early 90s to mid 2000s. I hate their late career shift uh, into weird kind of new age spiritual music. With, a, you know, an electric guitar so it can still be called rock and roll. But I'm telling you, some of those albums from the 90s were pretty pog, dude. Superman's Dead, Clumsy... You know, uh, Navid, Starseed, Happiness is Not a Fish That You Can Catch with One Man Army and Is Anybody Home? I mean, there's some, there's some good stuff going on there. Canadian alt-rock in the, in the 90s? Look, I'm not gonna say that it was, it had as much of an impact as, you know, grunge or, you know, the British invasion of Britpop in the, in the mid-1990s. But we had some pretty good stuff going on up here as well. And then, of course, I mean, once the, you know, new millennium rolled around, you get your wolf parades, you get your arcade fires, um, you know, you get your handsome furzes, you get your broken social scenes, and your your feists, and your uh, Owen Pallet slash Final Fantasies, and your Tokyo Police Clubs, and your et cetera, et cetera. Your Japan droids, and your... Um, there's more, I can't remember. I'm trying to remember, there was a... Uh, there was a band from the town that my college was in, my university was in. They had a song called Face Love that actually got a little bit of indie cred. I remember seeing the dude around town and I would always be like, hey, that's the guitarist and singer from the band that sang Face Love. Face Love, Canadian indie rock. P.S. I Love You was the name of the band. I think there's still a bit of people now and then. It's good stuff. It's not for everybody. You know, if you're if you're like, oh, this guy loves Kendrick Lamar, so I'll you know, I'll go with any of his recommendations. You might you know, it's I'm not gonna say it's you know that hard to like. It's not inaccessible in any stretch of the imagination, but it's a little it's it's not quite uh, you know, if these walls could talk. So it's in a different uh, wheelhouse, if you will. Alright, so I'm just I'm mashing myself. With the orbital here. It's a very nice run, dude. I mean, this might strike you as a little bit on the on the boredom side of the run. But, I mean, you gotta remember, we did... For about 0.2 seconds, I was convinced we were gonna die on this run. So I'm pretty pleased with the way things went down. Um, and you know, at the end of the day, I don't control the excitement of the run. I, I control to a degree. And I, I mean, I'm the only person who controls it. But even I don't have that much control over it. Um... I control to a degree the quality of the banter. <laughs> I'm definitely going to allergies right after this as well. Phrasing. Um, but it, the quality of the run, that, that ain't up to me. You know, that's 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 up to the, the items. We, we can have a little influence now and then, but... We did get Godhead. And I mean, you know, there's a lesson in there, I think, that we can apply to Isaac. Um, because it's about Isaac. Um, we uh, we said no to a couple deals or to a deal with the devil that was middling, but we probably would have been totally fine on uh, without dying. But by not taking it, you know what? We got we don't want Zodiac. I think by not taking it, we got access to Godhead instead, which just goes to show you sometimes you hit a hundred percent of the shots you don't take. Or a certain percentage. <laughs> what was the shot that we didn't take? We didn't take a shot on the deal with the devil, and thus we hit a three-pointer later. So, I will admit, I've had some spooky situations with, uh, with Mega Satan in the past. I don't... Were, were it not for Ipecac, I probably wouldn't have fought Mega Satan right away. I might have tried to you know, run a little bit more. Um, and maybe get some items on the chest and then probably fight Blue Baby. Getting Ipecac, though, is like... I mean, come on. You gotta. 
You got it's, it's just that simple. If you don't, you're you're a coward. And you can take that to the bank. I'm gonna take you to the bank, Senator Trent. To the blood bank. <laughs> I gotta watch more old Steven Seagal movies, man. I, I got a question. I'm not trying to insult Steven Seagal. Because I genuinely believe... Though he's probably not in prime conditioning right now. I genuinely believe that he has enough martial arts and fighting experience to, to beat me up. It, I mean, here's the thing. You might be like, oh, you should watch some of his movies. He doesn't know how to fight. Yeah, but I, like, really don't know how to fight. I, I recognize that he's older for sure. But I, I think he's got to at least... Even if he's, you know, not at the level even close. So, like, you know, a Bruce Lee type... He's got to at least know a thing or two about a thing or two, right? That being said, I just have to ask. So, like, Steven Seagal is still making movies. Who's watching a Steven Seagal-driven action movie in 2020? You see the clip? It went, like, semi-viral. It was a clip from, like, the final fight scene of one of his recent movies. He's literally just, like, rolling his fists in a circle and then, like, Slapping him on the forehead. Uh, anyway, I gotta see him. For now, thanks for watching. Hope you guys have enjoyed it. If you did, click the like button. Helps to the radio course. Subscribe if you want to see more in the future. For now, thanks for watching. I will see you next time. See you.